Okay. Hello, I'm here today with Natalie Everill. And Natalie Everill is a sleep consultant for babies and she's got lots of fantastic information. Natalie's been doing this for around 17 years now. And I've known Natalie for all that time, so it's actually pretty exciting to have Natalie here talking with me today. She's a great resource and has amazing insights and understanding around all things to do with babies and sleep, and even up to five years of age, really. But um, what we want to talk about today, because uh, I was talking to Natalie the other day, and I said, what do you think about coming on and having a chat about dummies and sleep? And she said, yes, let me open <laughs> So that's fantastic. Here she is. I'll let her tell you a little bit more about herself and we'll just have a chat as we go along. So hi, Natalie. Great to have you here. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Lovely to be here. And I always love collaborating with you. Yeah, we've done a few things over the years, haven't we? We have. Absolutely. Yes. And yeah, yeah thank you for that lovely intro. I have definitely been yeah, saving the sanity of sleep deprived parents of newborns to five year olds for the last 17 years. And my favorite thing to do is give them their life back. Yeah. So that's my mission. Mm -hmm. Yes, you put the smiles back on many mummies faces who uh, have many nights of disturbed sleep. <laughs> yes, because babies need sleep to grow, but parents need sleep to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the mum falls apart, the family falls apart. So we need to look after mum. Absolutely. So give us a little bit of insight on your, yeah, what are, what are your initial thoughts on, because we've got some interest in this group from parents saying, well, how do we get rid of the dummy or issues around the dummy? So maybe just start with why there are issues around the dummy from your perspective. What are you seeing? Absolutely. So I think the first important point is that we need to respect every mother's choices. And I like to come into a interaction with a new mum or a mum of any age and say, if what you're doing is working for you and your family, then it's the right thing to do. So I encourage the mums to parent by heart and do what feels right for them. And I think that's yes, a really I mean, good point, actually, that you say there. And I think that there is no judgment around this. It's not about that. And as you said, it's about a, a, a happy mummy baby relationship is what you're looking for ultimately, isn't it? Yes. So we do want to put that in there so thank you for bringing that up as well if it's not broken don't fix it so we're only talking about families where the mum says if the dummy's not working for me anymore it's causing more issues than it has benefits what can I do about it so the important thing I think to recognize is that in NICU many people will hear that the dummy is used to help the premature baby with their sucking reflex and that's because it's premature and they're not meant to be born yet and they need some assistance to help them achieve that sucking reflex so obviously within a medical situation it has its place outside of the hospital when we're looking at a normal term baby the dummy is often used as a pacifier and i like to call it a plug because often when the baby's whinging or crying and mum feels she's tried to use all of her available resources and nothing else is working and she'll reach for the plug and pop it in the baby's mouth. So I acknowledge that the dummy is often used as a survival strategy and I often recommend to mums whether they're using the dummy or if they have one that it's in the bottom of the baby bag with its lid on so that if mum doesn't usually use it but if she's trying to drive home from an appointment or get somewhere with the baby on her own and the baby's screaming and she's at risk of crashing the car because she's so stressed and she cannot do anything about the crying there's a place for her to calm her baby when she can't do it herself so there are many ways that a dummy can be used to soothe the baby and reduce mum's stress. The problem start for me when the dummy starts, stops the mum from listening to the baby. Mm -hmm. So my points that I talk to parents about in helping them make an informed choice about whether they'll either use or continue to use a dummy tend to, to work around three main issues. The first one being that the dummy prevents the baby from communicating with you. The second one being that the dummy interferes with how often the baby can demand feed. 
breast or bottle. And the third issue being that the dummy prevents the baby from learning to self-settle. And self-settling is the goal. So often when I say that people think it's the method, so I'm not talking about any particular method. I'm definitely not talking about when you leave a baby to cry unattended. That, that's a particular method, but self-settling is just giving your baby the capacity which they're born with of having an amazing uptime and going into bed happy and awake and putting themselves to sleep because they're ready for sleep and they're comfortable. So the dummy prevents the baby from self-settling because someone has to put it in and someone has to put it back in. So they're, they're the three points. Would you like me to expand yeah. on those a little bit? That's great, Natalie. Thank you. I think that's fantastic to put them there like that. I think that's so good because that's really nicely framed about what it's preventing happening because we don't even realise, and this is what's great information. So, yes, please expand on those because I think that's great. So when we think of the dummy as a plug and the baby's not screaming at you, I, I explain to mum that, we, we, especially if you're a first-time mum and you've got a new baby, it's nice to learn how the baby is communicates with you when they're happy or if they're whinging or if they've got a whinge pain or if they're hungry or if they're tired or if they're overtired and all of those noises sound completely different so to boost mum's confidence in getting to know her baby she needs time to hear those noises and and nurture that mother baby dyad and and bond with the baby but it's only time where you're listening and you're getting to know your baby and you, the days are rolling on that you come to understand how your baby communicates with you and so if the baby starts whinging but there's nothing really wrong and we're popping a dummy in we're preventing the baby from communicating with us and I say to the mum a dummy might stop the noise but it doesn't solve the problem so I would much rather that the mum look at her watch and say, where is my baby up to in their day right now? If it's their awake time, is it time for another top-up feed? Is it time for some, a change of environment, a different type of play? Are they actually getting tired now or have they got a pain? And so when, when the baby's able to communicate with you without the plug in their mouth, you're able to stop and listen to what they're saying and look at them and work out how to solve the problem rather than postponing it with the dummy in their mouth. So it allows the mum to communicate with the baby and the baby to communicate with her more effectively because we're allowing the baby to communicate. And I think what's really profound about that is it's such a worthwhile investment. Once you've got that communication, it, then you can so build on that, can't you? So it can be difficult to start with to work all those pieces out, but once you've got it, it's a huge part of that uh, connection you have. Yeah. I remember feeling like I had no idea what I was doing, that they let me leave the hospital with my firstborn baby, Lauren, and I'm thinking, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I was lucky with her, my firstborn, that she just taught me you know how to well this is me when I'm hungry and this is me when I'm tired and this is me when I've got a problem and so that bonding period and getting to know your baby boosts your confidence in I know my baby and I know what they need and when you as a mother can rely upon your parenting instincts and you feel confident about knowing your baby sure there's going to be days where you have no idea what's going on and you think bring on tomorrow how quickly can we bring on tomorrow but there's, it feels nice when you have that parenting confidence and, and you know what's happening with your baby and you can solve their problem and then you feel like you're doing a good job as yeah. a mum. Right. Yeah. I think that second point about interfering with feeds is a really big one because I encourage demand feeding, whether the mother is breastfeeding or bottle feeding, whether that's express breast milk or formula the baby has an awake time and they don't always have one sitting. So while babies have different feeding styles, they generally don't all just have one sitting. Their tummy is little and when they're born, it's the size of the little jar with the yellow lid that the mums do a urine sample in at the doctor's surgery and that's really tiny. So 
we they do and it's tiring to feed especially breastfeeding is tiring for a baby so it's completely normal that they don't just have one sitting at the breast in their awake time they're more likely to have several sittings at the breast so if the baby indicates that they've had enough time at the breast and they're getting tired and they want to come off, we can totally respect that. But then the next time the baby whinges, if we put the dummy in the mouth, the baby might actually be saying, I'm still hungry. Mm. And so if we don't have a dummy, we stop, we look at the baby and we think, okay, where are we in their uptime? Maybe they want some more food. Maybe they're bored. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they're whinging for another reason. But you solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So... You know, a, a baby will sleep beautifully when they've fed well and played well and they're giving you their confident tide signs and they're ready to sleep. So demand feeding is really important in their awake time and, and it's all about feeding the baby according to need. But we need them to have that opportunity to tell us that they want some more. Yeah. And then when we wait, interfere, the sucking on the dummy will be, use up time that could have been feeding time that could actually lead then to a more settled sleep and a longer sleep. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point, me. really good point. Mm. Yeah. And then the third point was that the dummies prevent self-settling. So a self-settling in itself is the baby has the capacity to settle themselves to sleep that they're happy to be in bed they've got a full tummy a dry nappy they're warm they're wrapped up they're in their bed and they're happy to close their eyes and go to sleep if mum and dad have to come in and put the dummy in the baby's mouth and then the baby develops a sleep association with the dummy and then it falls out then potentially mum and dad have to come back in and put the dummy back in when the baby wakes up and realizes the dummy's not in my mouth anymore somebody come back and put the dummy in my mouth now so when mums come to me at, for solving their sleeping problems they're sometimes surprised to, to hear that I want to take the dummy out of the equation to, to at least trial it because I explain it prevents the baby from putting themselves to sleep and learning that skill that then enables them to resettle themselves in the middle of a short sleep or to go potentially longer at night if they're developmentally ready on their own accord without asking for the dummy. So it gives them that skill to be able to do that. And the interesting thing is that the, the mum and dad's fear of taking the dummy away is often worse than how the baby copes without the dummy. It's so true, isn't it? And I think that's great to hear you say that as well and I think this is something the mums and dads need to hear because yeah it's I it's, think it's it's us it's having more of a problem than the baby yes yeah they the, the parents often think they my baby's had a dummy for you know two four six eight ten eighteen months how are they going to go to sleep without it but they can and they do and, um, it's, and it, once again it's another really important skill for life that self-regulation that ability to uh, be able to get to sleep. yourself yeah, yeah. because mm. Uh, you know, I don't think we ever stop being in a new situation. You know, we, we're babies, then we're toddlers, then we're preschoolers, primary schoolers, teenagers, adults, but we're always learning something new and life challenges us. And it's important to develop resources to be able to cope with the normal stresses of life and you know, those resources are internal as well as external. And so when we give the baby the capacity to be okay about putting themselves to sleep, and of course they were born without a dummy. This is They correct. could do it in the womb <laughs> and they can yeah. do it out of the womb. But I feel it's about the parents wanting to reduce the crying, which we completely understand, and reduce the stress and calm the situation. Mm -hmm. So quite often, if I'm working with a family and they are very anxious about the process of changing their baby's habits and sleep associations and they really want the baby to self-settle to sleep and they have a dummy, then I will totally respect the anxiety in the family and what mum can cope with because if she doesn't feel comfortable about our plan, she's not going to sustain it and therefore it's not going to achieve her, her goal. So I'll often have a staged approach where I will use the dummy within a certain capacity to calm the baby to sleep that calms mum to sleep and then we work on a weaning program to yeah. help mum achieve 
feeling more comfortable about each step and reducing everybody's stress, the idea being we remain as calm as possible. We want the baby calm, we want mum calm. We want this to be comfortable. So if we need to use the dummy to reduce mum's stress, but we have a weaning plan, then, then that's the best way to go. It's so true, isn't it? I think that's really respectful and the way absolutely it should be approached is to respect uh, those both those needs there because uh, yes we've got to keep the mum come in the process too lots of great information there Natalie so just give me those three again because I think they're really great very simple but can you just uh, name those up again for us so the dummy prevents the baby communicating with you and prevents you learning their communication style and what their different cries and noises mean okay. the dummy interferes with the baby's ability to demand feed yeah and the dummy prevents the baby from being able to self-settle. Yes, so if you're one of the new mums in this group, or actually I know we've got a couple of people in here who haven't had the baby yet who are interested in the oral milestones, there's some really good information around how to get the most out of those early phases when you're trying to learn, as you said, Natalie, when you bring your, your first baby home and you're really um, trying to get your confidence. But there's some great uh, information there and really starting to look at those cries and what are they telling you? What's that baby communicating with you? And uh, sometimes reaching out can be so important. So let's get your details so that people, if they wanted to contact you, how would they find you, Natalie? Because you're a font of all sorts of fantastic information. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my, my website contains all the information on my products and services and how I can help mums. And it has my free report, which is a great way to introduce the mum to my approach to, to improving sleeping and settling. And my website is sleepandsettle.com.au. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, for coming on. It's been fantastic to hear you articulating it so well, all that amazing information you have. And uh, hopefully there'll be some mums on here who will reach out because I think it's great to have that support. It sounds easy to do, but it's fantastic with that nurturing and support to be able to um, help transition them from the, the dummy in the, the early days or the later days or wherever they're at with it. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Natalie. Thanks, Mary.